Hey guys, it's Jen and today you're joining me in my bathroom. <laughs> so um, I wanted to make this video but I didn't, I mean this place has the best lighting. So don't judge my current situation right here. Um, but yeah, it's good lighting, good sound so I hope it makes the video more enjoyable. Today's video is going to be talking about my experiences playing in the Monday qualifiers. Uh, maybe some things that people might not know and one of the reasons why I feel like I have mentioned this in my videos before but if I haven't I just wanted to say it again today um, there's a few reasons why I obviously started a YouTube channel one of it was because I you guys know I was in COVID blah 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 lockdown blah 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 but also like in addition to putting a lot of content about helping hopefully helping amateur golfers and other people who you know just want to get better at golf I also wanted to create a little space for people to be able to find information that they might not be able to find elsewhere so that is more related to the videos that I share about my life on tour and I felt like when I turned pro um, there really wasn't a lot of information out there for me to find especially you know obviously if you already have friends it's easy to ask them but if you don't, you know, like it's not so easy to just access information. Things such as Monday qualifiers are not really often discussed. So I felt like there was not a lot of resources to just go online and be like, hey, how do I turn pro in golf and what is the next step? So I share these kind of videos I'm hoping that it would help people who maybe are in similar situations I am or you know who have just turned pro and would like to know more information or would just simply like to know more about life on tour. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to like it if you do and subscribe to my channel for more Golf with Jen. Okay, so in addition to filming in the bathroom, I am now sitting at the bathtub so um, I was not going to stand for the whole duration of this video so just ignore my whole circumstance and just pay attention to the content okay um, okay so let's kind of talk about it I think I'm going to start off and kind of talk about Monday qualifiers and um, how you get into them uh, that kind of details so first of all if you are an LPGA member, and I'm obviously going to talk about it from the female perspective, I'm not 100% sure if it's the same for the men's side, like if you are trying to get to a PGA Monday qualifier, but from the LPGA Monday qualifier perspective, that's what I'm going to discuss it from. So if you are an LPGA member, there is an LPGA app, it is very easy to access it and just to basically see the entire year how many Monday qualifiers there are and you can just sign up for it. I think there is a limit of like maybe 50 players qualifier if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, you can basically go on there, look at the calendar, look at whatever qualifiers you want to go join and just like put your name in there. It's pretty easy if you're a member, you can just go in there, look it up, plan it, go for it. So other than that, um, some, some other things that people might not know about money qualifiers is number one, if you are an LPGA member so for instance for me I obviously just came from Malaysia and I was playing in Asia the couple the last couple of years so there wasn't really any point for me to pay for a C Metro membership. So something that people might not know as well, it's easy to be a member of a tour but that might not mean that you have any playing rights. So because I came for Q school in 2017 and I actually got C Metro status then and I could have easily just continued my Symmetra membership and paid the dues at the beginning of the year and became a Symmetra member. But obviously because I didn't come back after that to play in the Symmetra tour because I was playing in Korea, I basically was going to just pay that dues, pay the dues for no reason because I knew I was not going to come back and play. So I did not pay for my dues then. So after that, obviously I just did not continue paying it. So because of that this year, even though I have a whole like membership and account, I, I'm not a Symmetra member, so that is because I just did not pay the dues in the beginning of the year. So yeah, so there is a difference. One of the things that, that affects is the amount that you pay for Monday qualifiers. So as a member, like a Symmetra 2 member or an LPGA member, you only pay $200 to go and play these Monday qualifiers. As a non-member, even though I am technically a member because I have an account, I didn't pay my dues, so I pay $500. So. For future references, if you are going to be in the US and you think you're going to be playing any of the Monday qualifiers, I definitely think that it's worth it to get 
to pay the dues in the beginning of the year because the dues are not that expensive and obviously like for the amount that I played like the money qualifies that I ended up playing um, it would have saved me a lot of money to not have to pay $500 for a one day tournament so yeah I would definitely recommend if you are able to pay the dues and get the membership definitely pay the dues because it's going to be worth it and these money qualifiers are like you know if you have time or like if it's close to you it's definitely worth going to so I mean unless you can plan your entire schedule and you know exactly which ones you're going to chances are you might have a few that you can play and I would 100% recommend you to play so if you are going to play them it's definitely worth it to pay those dues in the beginning of the year so yeah registering for Monday qualifier is as easy as that literally you just pay the dues sign up online and go play the money qualifiers unless of course there's more than 50 people signed up and then I think it will just go based on your ranking and categories like if there's already like 50 LPGA members signed up and you are not an LPGA member you probably not get into the money qualifier but I don't think as far as I've seen they've gotten close to a full field but it's never been like 53 and they had to turn down players so I think there's a high chance that you will get into every money qualifier so yeah, I think money qualifiers are an awesome thing. Um, it gives people a chance to get into an LPG event. Okay, so the next point that I wanted to discuss is why do money qualifiers? So when I kind of put it out there that, you know, obviously like my plans changed. So now I kind of have nothing to do for the rest of the year in America. Um, and I had basically, I hadn't booked a ticket home. So I was thinking and then I went to look online and I was like, oh, I could join this Monday qualifiers because there were four weeks in a row where I could travel and play those Monday qualifiers and if I played well I would literally get into an LPGA event so why not um, I don't want it to seem like my videos are like asking for sympathy or something like that but I think it's pretty ridiculous when I put it out there and there's always gonna be like haters who have something to say and I'm not saying this to like acknowledge them because honestly I do not give a crap what you think about what I'm doing as long as I feel like I'm doing the right thing but I think that one of the you know, people were commenting saying like oh why are you even trying to do this like you are just gonna waste money and time so for me personally why I wanted to play this money qualifiers so that's what I'm gonna address not haters because honestly they are just jealous that you are living the life that they wish they could live I guess <laughs> So anyway, um, the main reason why I wanted to play on this Monday qualifier, to go on this Monday qualifier journey is because I have never played in an LPJ event. So for me, it's yeah, like playing the whole year in the WPT, especially after being on a break, you know, COVID year. Um, it was great, great experience to be able to come here and get competitive again. But I think one of the things that was lacking was um, I, as someone who has never played in a LPGA tournament, it's hard to kind of like look at the girls on TV every week and be like, oh, they're shooting 12 under. I wish I knew what I would shoot if I was in the course today playing that same course, same conditions, everything. And how far am I actually away from them? Like how much better are they than I am? So. For me, I think the main initiative was I wanted to be able to experience LPGA golf. So to be able to play on the same golf courses the same week that they were going to play, to experience the conditions, to put myself, to step out of my comfort zone. I mean, coming here was stepping out of my comfort zone in general, but um, to put myself in that situation where I am surrounded by the best in the world, I think that was my main intention to just experience what it would be like and to see what I actually need to improve on, achieve, you know, etc, etc. So I think to me it is a no-brainer. Like if you have the opportunity to play in Monday qualifiers, 100% do. You learn so much, you play on the same courses these girls do. You can, after playing them, whether you make, if you don't make it, you can also watch them play during the weekend and see where they are gaining strokes from you and that's how you can get better and that's how you can see what you need to improve. So I've always found it hard because if you don't know what you need to improve and you're not playing in the same courses that these girls are playing week in and week out, like it's very hard to judge how you are going to be able to get there because you don't know what 
there is. You don't know what the standard is. You don't know what you're missing. So for me, I wanted to experience that to see the golf courses that they're playing. Like, is it so much more difficult and they're so good? Or is it the conditions are so good? Like, what is it? So what I want to say with regard to that is after playing those money qualifiers, I feel like I know my game so much more. I learned so much in those four weeks, even though I did not qualify for the event. Obviously, if I had qualified, you guys would have been the first to know. I would have definitely informed you guys. But I will include my scores. For, I played four Monday qualifiers. So we went all the way from California, drove to Portland, drove to Arkansas, and then we had two weeks in the New Jersey area. So these were my scores. Um, one of the things that it's kind of hard is Monday qualifiers are a whole different game because it is one day, you only get one day to do it. It's either you make it or not. It's different from playing a tournament. In, in, okay, in certain ways, it's similar because it's still, obviously, if you shoot a good score, you're still gonna qualify or, you know, if you're in tournament, you're still gonna make the cut or win or whatever. But the difference with Monday Qualifier is I think the mindset that you play, it's, the mindset of playing a Monday Qualifier is different because you have 18 holes. In some situations, I think if it's like the US Open Qualifier, it's 36, but for all the ones that I played, it was 18 holes. So you basically have 18 holes to either make it or not. There's no, you know, coming in third. Like, for all the qualifiers, I think it was, yeah, all the qualifiers took two people. So if you were third, it didn't matter if you shot 10 under and you came in third, you're still not going to make it. With COVID, we actually do online scoring. So we use our phones and we put our scores in there. So in addition to being able to do this, you can also see the scoreboard on your phone. So it's very easy to tell, like, either you're in it or you're out of it. I think that is one of the difference because that's something that people might not know and I'm not saying like oh my whole score was like I would have played a lot better if it wasn't a money qualifier or whatever but um, when you're playing a money qualifier and you know you're four behind and you have nine holes to play you will tend to play the, a different kind of golf than you would if you were just playing a regular tournament because you have nine holes to play it's either you make it or you don't in a golf tournament you know that okay I have nine holes to play, I'm far behind, but if I'm steady, I can still catch up tomorrow. I just try to inch closer, you know, something like along that lines. You don't have to be super aggressive, you don't have to try and make up those four strokes right then and there. But for Monday qualifiers, that's exactly what you need to do. So the goal that you tend to play in Monday qualifiers is not exactly the perfect representation of what you might do in the tournament golf. So for that respect, it was kind of hard to base, like, for instance, if I shot 74 in the money qualifier and the cut for the tournament was to play 72-72, like, do I think that I could have made the cut? Yeah, for sure. Like, I think that there is a chance if I made the tournament, if I played well, I could have definitely made the cut. Even though I'm like, well, I shot 74 in the money qualifier, so if you were already two over the fir first day, like, how would you have made the cut? Like, some people might think that way, but it's hard. I think the main goal is to be able to see the golf course and to see, like, what is the standard like are they playing a super long course like do I need to hit further do I need to improve this improve that um, so yeah I think in terms of scoring judging solely based on the money qualifier scoring and like the scoring during the tournament is kind of difficult because of that point like you don't play the same golf that you play in a money qualifier as you do in a tournament but other than that like I said like it was good just to be there and, you know to see the girls come in to see the girls play and practice and see what they're doing see how they practice um, see see the prep that goes into preparing for the tournament that week so I think all these kind of things you cannot get it anywhere else like we don't have an LPGA tournament in Malaysia right now so I couldn't just go and see how these girls did it like if I didn't sign up for this money qualifiers I would never be able to see all these things that I did so I 100% think that it is worth it to go for this Monday qualifiers and I do not regret a second of it even though I did not qualify for them I learned so much and I think two th well I paid two thousand bucks which is a lot of money but was it worth it yes because now I think I came out with the clarity of like I know what an LPGA golf course is like I know where I need to improve every single Monday qualifier I knew exactly for instance if I didn't qualify by four strokes I knew where those four strokes would come from and even more, you know, so like I said, part of it was trying to compare myself 
even though like I said the situation is not going to be 100% comparable like next to each other it's comparable in the sense of like I can see from the tournament like what the girls are doing like what's missing are they just playing stellar golf that they're just hitting every fairways and every green is their short game just super good or are they just smarter do they just know how to plan their way around the golf course so I definitely learned a lot from playing this Monday qualifiers um, I do have a couple things that I need to work on a couple things that I'm going to go back but now another good thing is that now going back I know exactly what I'm working towards so several things that I'm going to tell you guys that I, th I found was number one I think I have been having some problems with distance capping and I don't know if you know my clubs could have been bent with all the traveling that I was doing um, just a little bit but like there are some gaps in my clubs and those gaps are big like very important for me to play well if I was to be for instance on the LPGA tour right now because what I realized playing on those courses is you might have some meat irons but a lot of the scoring area is between the long irons and the wedges so I felt like a lot of the par fours were either not the par fours but in general it was either I was approaching the green with really long clubs by really long I mean between like five iron to five wood or really short like a wedge which I did not think that I would be hitting that many wedges on an LPJ course so number one definitely tightening my wedges number two I definitely need to fix those gapping distances in my clubs which I will go home and do with my club fitter, which you guys know, Eric, the OG. Um, definitely need to get that done because the gaps right now is between the distance of a club that I would use on a par 3. So for instance, 180 yard carry. Right now I have a club that carries 170 and a club that carries 190. So I don't actually have a club that carries 180. I don't know how that happened. I used to. But yeah, anyway, I need to get that figured out. Just figure out my gapping properly to make sure that my clubs are going to help me because most of the par threes, I actually did not have the perfect club to hit into because most of the par threes in general, I felt like there was a lot of this between 170 to even 190 distance of what I needed to hit and I just did not have that club. So fix, well, tighten my wedges, fix my gap and also play a lot smarter so one of the things that I learned one of the tournaments I had the opportunity to work with I'll call him a professional caddy and there was a lot of like management things that we talked about that I never thought about and you know one of the things that I personally never thought about is what they told me was that the LPGA girls all of them can hit around the same you know like it's nothing like superior but maybe some girls have better ball striking, some girls have better short game, blah blah blah. But one of the things is that they're always hitting for placement. They're hitting to a certain spot. They're not just hitting whatever they have in the bag, hitting the max out and just, you know, trying to get from there. They are planning their way around the golf course, which is something that even the caddy told me, like, it is hard to do if you are just a player by yourself because that is the job of a caddy like you should not have to be doing all these kind of things by yourself which obviously is difficult because I don't have my own personal caddy that knows my game, knows my distances but it's something that I myself can learn and then over time when I do get the chance to hire a caddy like a professional caddy it's something that we can work together with but it's also this game plan like the whole game plan system I learned a lot just like talking to this caddy working with him for one round and like I think that is also a missing point like these girls are not just out there to hit like not to toot my own horn but I saw a lot of people a lot of people talk to me and sure they could just be trying to toot my horn but like they told me you know I don't see any difference in your hitting you just need some you, you need to well, obviously, it's, if it's caddies and they told me, like, you know, you need someone there because they wanted to work with me. But I think it is correct. Like, I, most of the time, I'm very aggressive. I don't like to, you know, hit a five wood instead of a driver and, like, give myself better distance. But sometimes I hit the driver and now I end up in an awkward distance. So I do need to think a lot more about that, especially playing tournament golf. Because, like I said just now on this... LPG courses you either had 
these long clubs or these wedges. So for these wedges, wedges, I think one of the reasons why I was not as tight and one of the things that could help me get tighter is also having a really really good distance and then hitting to that distance versus you know just hitting a driver and then being able, I mean obviously conditions, swing, everything changes every day so if you hit the driver on the same hole every single day you could have from 75 to 100 yards also depending on pin position so knowing exactly where the pin position is and knowing what distance I want into the green things like that is things that I need to work on more as my for myself and just learn how to plan my way around the golf course better but yeah, I mean, okay, it's already been like 20 minutes so I'm not gonna make this video super duper long but yeah, I think you guys can tell. Um, I learned a lot from this four weeks playing and some people were like, why are, you go why are you going for this thing? You're just torturing yourself, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, yeah, it was not easy. It was, my friend and I, we drove the whole way. We drove from California to Jersey and from Jersey all the way back to California. Was it easy? Was it like I was going on a holiday? No, it was tiring. It was a lot of stress. It was pulling my own back. Sometimes we didn't managed to play practice rounds because the course didn't allow us to play practice rounds so you literally went to this Monday qualifier had one round to prove yourself and you didn't you've never even seen the course before so it's you know it's it's not easy it's not like I went there just to go for a holiday and to go see America like I could have used that two thousand dollars and bought clothes <laughs> I mean I think that what I did was so worth it and there's always gonna be haters, I understand that, like whatever, it is what it is, that's just the way it is. Um, nobody's gonna agree with everything you do, so whatever. As long as I feel like I'm spending my time and my money correctly and I feel like it's worth it, that's all that matters to me. But yeah, I wanted to share this with you guys because you guys obviously as part of Team, J Team Jen, like you guys always want to know, want to be updated and I really appreciate that. So I love sharing all these stories with you showing what it's like on tour because I think these are things that I don't know I don't see any many videos about things like this and it's hard when you are an aspiring pro and you don't know what the life is going to be and you can't plan for it and you don't know what's going to happen because you literally don't know what to expect so I'm hoping that videos like this reach the people that want to pursue the same journey that I'm pursuing but also just to show my appreciation for people on Team Chan because you guys not only encourage me to be better but also supporting me on this journey and like always sending me motivational messages and stuff like that those all are important because it is hard out here on tour like people think it's so easy and we're just going on holidays and like obviously during my time there I posted a lot of pictures of like traveling and stuff like that. people like oh yeah enjoy your holiday like when are you gonna start playing tournament golf again it's like guys social media obviously I'm gonna show you all the good things So this is our life and how we've been traveling. Um, it's pretty messy back there. We actually started off with a CX-30, a Mazda. I don't know if you guys know how big a CX-30 is. It is not very big, especially if you have two people traveling with two golf bags and two push carts and enough um, luggage for a month and a half. So it was not very convenient. Luckily, they managed to give us a minivan and we didn't have to pay extra, so that was super nice. But yeah, this is the travel situation. It's pretty fun. Um, yeah, so especially one of the reasons why we need to bring more clothes too is because sometimes you don't really get hotels that have laundry. So we need to pack enough clothes for basically, you know, the amount of tournaments that we're going to play. So that makes it a little bit tricky because you can't just pack, you know, like four outfits and like just reuse it because if you don't have laundry then now you are stuck with nothing and we have had situations where we didn't have laundry and we had to wash our clothes in the sink so that is just normal um, that's life on tour not complaining I mean I'm lucky and blessed just to be able to do this so not complaining but yeah just kind of showing what it's like right now <laughs> but yeah you know life on tour is not always glitz and glam like I I think you guys know that by now but yeah, there's so many things that you can learn every single day. There's so many amazing people that you meet on the way. And I think that part of why I'm doing this is because I want to share this journey with you guys. And I think that it is something that not a lot of people do because not a lot of people want to share their failures. Yeah, sharing failures is hard. It's hard for me to come here and be like, hey guys, I just played four tournaments and I didn't 
achieve what I wanted to achieve. Yeah, but at the same time, what I got from that was so much more. And I'm, you know, golf is more failures than success. Like that is just, you're gonna lose more than you win. So, but you can always win in other ways. You can win by what you learn. You can win by the people you meet, by the experiences that you have. And that is also a big part of the journey. So yeah, I'm gonna stop blabbing. Um, if you guys made it all the way to the end, thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this wonderful um, background. <laughs> And yeah, if you guys are also wondering why I sound weird, it's because I came. Also, fun fact, I always get sick after traveling. Like, I just, I'm a very high strong person. So after traveling, my body's kind of like, okay, time for you to relax and go to sleep. And the only way you're gonna do that is if you get sick. So it always happens to me. So yeah, don't worry, I'm fine. It's just like, I get a lot of like congestion. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you guys found it interesting. Always leave a comment because I love interacting with you guys and I'll try to get back to as many as I can. Love you guys. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.